Thank you, um, Liz, for the kind introduction. It's always a burden to come uh, towards the end of such a great summit and present because already so many great speakers have spoken so nicely about the topic and you feel that there's little that you can add anymore. So I've been thinking about <clears throat> deep philosophical stuff that I could say that, like, you know, maybe I think, therefore I scan and, and things like that, just so that, you know, I can match their, uh, um, uh, the legacy that they've left behind. But um, over here, I'm not going to go into the technological details of uh, what we've done, and um, I think a lot has been talked about technology. I'm just going to really quickly go over uh, some of the approach that we took, because that could potentially also provide food for thought as we um, look to conclude this uh, excellent summit. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, I'm going to try to keep it really short because I know that uh, we are lagging behind and everyone would want to uh, wrap up on time to catch a glimpse of Berlin as well. Um, and in doing so, I'll also try to keep it really informal. So you're welcome to uh, pitch in whenever you feel like and raise questions during the presentation as well. Um, I'm representing a great team over here. Dr. Murtaza Taj actually is the lead professor on this who unfortunately could not join us, but uh, um, it's it's a great team of people who are working uh, back in Lahore on this. So it's a privilege to be uh, presenting on their behalf. So let me just start with uh, a very short question that how many of you have actually been to Pakistan? Well, we know Ross has been. Uh, so uh, other than that, that's really unfortunate because the subcontinent is actually uh, home to some of the richest um, historical uh, places in the country, uh, in the world, and uh, many of the people, due to certain security challenges and the global atmosphere of how things are viewed, cannot go there. But do not worry; that's exactly what Sayark and us are working towards, trying to uh, bring those heritage sites to you. Um, as I said, Pakistan on its own also has a rich cultural history. We have over a hundred heritage sites which are recognized to be uh, extremely important. Six of them have been, uh, six or seven of them have been highlighted by UNESCO as uh, 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 priority sites. Uh, they range from Indus civilization, oldest cities that were recognized, uh, Mohenjo-daro and um, Buddhist stupas um, going uh, not to not so recent to the Mughal era, um, where we have from where we have Taj Mahal in India, but we have some um, really interesting sites on this side of the border too. Um, in that, uh, again, although one can claim that um, the need for us to be preserving uh, archaeology, uh, these heritage sites digitally is not as um, essential and immediate as probably states that are affected by um, ISIS and because there's little evidence to suggest um, direct attacks on heritage sites in Pakistan, but still um, there is just to the due to the lack of uh, attention by the government and lack of knowledge in the masses, there is periodic deterioration that is taking place, making, us re making it really important for us to look into this. Um, over the course of the last two days, we've talked in detail about uh, the importance of digital preservation in comparison to physical preservation, and we all recognize that it is the way to go forward. Um, there is no denying that it is most co more cost effective, it is uh, more time consuming, but one thing as we go on, it is, it is really important for us to keep in mind that uh, physical structures do have an importance of their own, and they are not just uh, brick and mortar that's just standing there. There are stories along with them that we really need to be mindful of. And especially in Pakistan, uh, growing up in a country which has really rich cultural heritage, uh, one realizes that the younger generation is more and more disengaged with their past. And the reason for that, for that being that the government on its own is also not uh, highlighting these important sites as something that should be considered of, of you know, great importance by the citizens. So how do we generate this interest? How do we, how do we make sure that as we are digitally preserving these um, uh, heritage sites, we also preserve the stories alongside them and, and the connection that the people have with them? And uh, in doing that, um, 
what we did was we had an initiative that was started in 2012. It was initially funded by Google, but we started uh, the center called Technology for People Initiative, where the idea was that we would engage young students uh, in universities and have them work leveraging technologies on public sector problems. And one of the major one of them was um, digital preservation. So. Very uh, clearly, our objectives was to establish leadership among the youth to actually look into these problems and then kickstart a movement in Pakistan where youth would feel motivated enough to go and digitally preserve these heritage sites. Because that's where we felt the value is, uh, and that's how we should approach the problem going forward. So we started off with uh, just doing it with a simple DSLR. We were uh, taking a lot of pictures, trying to document them. Um, but uh, as we've really gone over technology in the past two days, the results were not that accurate. Uh, we also tried aerial photography. Uh, but I don't know how many of you are aware of the global politics. But we in Pakistan are not that much fan of drones over there. So uh, that was not the best of strategy for us. Uh, uh, raised a lot of eyebrows. Um, yet, even then, um, there, there, there was some. Um, we did that, but still, the way forward was to go with the um, sc scanners that we've been talking about. In that, we got some initial funding from USAID. We wanted to present to them, to them a proof of concept of how we can engage youth in um, in partnership with SciArc and document certain sites in Pakistan. Initially, we picked up eight sites. Each in uh, two in each province, and uh, the idea was that these are some of the sites that we picked. Um, each site was extremely important um, in terms of the local uh, stories that could be associated with it. So there, there was a value in picking these sites, um, and that was kind of our model going forward that we would have training, we would dis disseminate that training, we would use technology, and we would start developing outputs that we would be able to project on a portal that everyone would be able to have a look at. Um, so um, SciArc was kind enough to extend um, great training to us. And this is how it actually all started, where Ross was kind enough to come all the way to Pakistan and train the first batch of students, which we uh, envisaged as the beginning of the movement in Pakistan. Um, the students, once trained by Ross himself, who was there when it was really hot and 45 degrees, uh, so it was no small feat. But um, the students then would go out in the field themselves. And how we would structure it, that the students, uh, the, the activities would be integrated with their coursework. So there was an in, in, um, increased incentive for them to be more involved. And the idea was that the incentive would get them more involved. And once they're more motivated, the overall work would just draw them in and have them continue doing what they want to do. Um, so the, in doing that, we started out with uh, Masjid Wazir Khan Mosque, which also was recognized by SciArc and is also one of the uh, 500 sites that they've uh, started out with. Um, and at the same time, we would have the same students train the next batch of students. So every time, we would not want to go back to SciArc to ask us. Uh, obviously, we, we would be communicating with SciArc regularly, but we do not want uh, basic training skills to be communicated again and again. And we want the students to uh, pass on the baton um, to the next uh, batch of students. And that was very exciting, because the students would be able to take ownership, uh, and they would get more students involved. Um, and in doing so, we were very rapidly, since we were training batch of students, and the number of students was increasing, we were rapidly able to collect data very quickly on uh, within, I think it's been six months, but we've been able to do uh, seven sites in that time. So it's, it's just been very fast, very quick for us, because we've trained multiple batch of students. The scanner is available. We do not have any additional cost for them, except for the logistics that we manage. And they would go out into the field themselves. They would be really passionate about it. They would climb those, those walls, which we would not recommend them to climb, because they would really want to capture every detail that they can. 
And the most exciting part is that we would try to get students from multiple disciplines. So, uh, and, and students who would belong to those local areas, so they would be able to connect to that heritage site. So uh, it would not be only computer science students, or it would not be only architecture students who would be working on it. There'd be anthropology students who would be coming in, who would be working on the documentation aspect of it, just so that the story really becomes comprehensive at the end of the day. Um, so these are just some of the sites, the Rabar Fort that we did, um, and uh, again, the temperatures over here are about 50 degrees, but the students did this entire site within a week, which was remarkable. They would go at 5 a.m., come back in the evening. Um, so, so that's how it, it, ha it just has generally been, that you know, we've been able to create this critical mass of students which we really want to take the ownership of, and I think, uh, we, that should be the approach when we are going forward, because at the end of the day, we really have to draw these um, these heritage sites into the stories that they are embedded in, and that's what makes them so important for the local communities to be involved in. Thank you, guys.